So it's, you know, we get a lot of sun in the summer, which is a good thing, we like being outside, but it's going to make our roof hot. You guys are telling me it's 160 or so it in can, the attic. It can get like unvented, that, which pretty is much. really hot. Hey guys, it's Matt Hoots with Sawhorse, and I am at South Face. More specifically, I'm in the training cabin within South Face. I've got Amelia Godfrey. She's the program manager for all the Southeast. But the reason we're meeting up here in the attic, it's August. It's super hot. We're in Georgia, hot Atlanta. Um, there's a lot of misperceptions about how heat works, how humidity works, filtration. We're going to go over some of those. So let's talk about the first topic I want to talk about, heat transfer. Okay. A lot of people are on the second floor of their house and they're like, man, it's really hot. And somebody, and this is why we're in the attic, somebody recently said, you know, all those activities on the first floor is why it's hot on the second floor. But I knew that wasn't true, but I wanted, you know, somebody that was that. the expert to talk about that and explain to them why that. Okay. is not necessarily the case so what's happening in the attic and why is all right we're in the attic what we're in, that... we're in an attic and fortunately we're in an attic in a building that's a fake it's, attic, it's so. fake attic so we're, we're not sweltering up here but for heat transfer i mean it all starts with the sun so it's you know we get a lot of sun in the summer which is a good thing we like being outside but it's going to make our roof hot and our roof's going to get really hot and it's going to transfer its energy to the framing and it's also going to radiate its heat everywhere within here this is an enclosed space so it's gonna get really hot even well, with yeah. even with attic ventilation it's gonna get really hot and it's gonna have an you know these are ductwork up here this is our training cabin so we like to show kind of the problems that we face uh with residential construction these aren't particularly well insulated and then our method for slowing the heat transfer into our living space is the insulation which you can kind of yeah, say, it's not. It's not wonderful, and so it's it just, not the code either. It's like maybe our <laughs> twenty something, not our thirty eight. It's yeah, it's intentionally not not great to prove a point, and it gets so hot up here, and our system's up here. Most of our system is up here, and it's all just going to really struggle to cool. So let's talk about how obviously this is really hot. I mean, this we're not even outside now, and I kind of feel like it's a little bit hot up here. <laughs> it's like you know, you know, and you know, of course, the HVAC guys are like, "Man, Matt, just suck it up." <laughs> so if it's a hundred degrees outside, you know, from previous trainings that I've done with South Face, you guys are telling me it's one hundred and sixty or so in can, the attic, it can get unvented, like that, which is much. really hot. And even with so most attics are vented passively. And it's just relying on just hot air heating up and rising up through. That's not going to cool anything. And you've got 120 degrees, 140 degrees, and we're expecting 100 degree temperatures outside this weekend. And that's going to create an oven, basically. Yeah. And all that heat, heat transfers from hot to cold. So it's not going to go up or down. It's going to go. But earlier you cooler? said it like the heat's going out. So like, are it's, you telling me warm air moves? Not warm, oh, okay. Warm air moves, got it, and got then it. heat transfers from hot to cold. Got it. So you've got a variety of different methods that heat transfers through buildings, and if you're cooling your house to seventy-eight yeah. or cooler, the heat's going to go into the house, or it's also combined it's going to really put pressure on this system right here and it's going to struggle also to cool your house so let's talk about why this system or this actually this this, this attic isn't horrible it's not <laughs> ideal but it's not it's not horrible it could okay. it could be better mm -hmm. so one of the things that we like to do especially for addicts already mentioned let's pretend like it's 160 degrees up here yeah this ductwork is baking but the, the other part of that is like, you know, what if what if this ductwork isn't sealed? Then Correct. you're losing some energy to the attic, but also on the return side, you're sucking some of that hot air yes, you in are. from that. Um, and, and I guess, you know, the, the defense from the attic to the main house is this insulation, but if you have gaps in the insulation, it's not necessarily working. And also like holes and things like that. What do you see on some of the tests that you guys usually do in attics and like what, why are homeowners typically uncomfortable on the second floor? Usually it is going to be, like you talked about, poor insulation. If you've got insulation that's like compressed or if it's missing, that's going to be a hot heat transfer location. You can't increase the R value by compressing it? <laughs> Doesn't work that way? <laughs> Depends on the material. Got it, got it. Uh, but for insulation like what you normally see in an attic, a blown in fibrous insulation, when you compress it, it's not going to work. 
Uh, and again, so heat transfer, it ha hot to cold, and it follows the path of least resistance. So if you've got, got a bunch of missing insulation or it's compressed, that's going to be where you've got hot zones. And then kind of what you talked about, every time that there is a hole cut in the ceiling for cam lights or your HVAC ductwork or uh, ceiling fans, any kind of hole, uh, that's going to be air leakage movement. Yep. And all that hot air is in the attic uh, and also the heat in the attic, it's going to transfer into that living space. It seems small, but when you add all of that up over the entire surface of your attic, you've got a lot of areas for heat transfer and it's going to make your living space uncomfortable. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uncomfortable. Well, let's talk about some ways to avoid it. Obviously, there's two different scenarios. One, you're in the planning phase. Um, we can avoid this mess altogether by doing what? We can just change the just, building enclosure yeah. envelope, whatever the cool kids are calling it these days. <laughs> we can. That's pretty popular is to just insulate your roof line. Okay. And by putting the insulation up here, now you're slowing your heat transfer pretty much at the source. Got it. And you're bringing all of this space. Now it's going to be conditioned space. And your ductwork, it's going from 120 degree space to now what, like 80, maybe. 80 yeah. in a worst case scenario. Or if it's actual living space, it's whatever you're conditioning it exactly. to. Exactly. And you're sealing up like all those little holes don't matter anymore because everything's here. And so that's one way and that's a popular way. And then the uh, sort of, you've got an existing house and you're not doing anything with your attic. Uh, it's called just a home performance, remove all the insulation, pull it all back, seal everything. Yep. And then put down a new layer of insulation that's properly installed with complete coverage and you'll see a big big difference so so really it's the air sealing plus the insulation i know a lot of yeah. people say hey we've we've insulated our house but you go into these older houses and you see dirt and stuff like that and and that's an indication of air movement also inside the house spider web something mm -hmm. you guys taught us a while ago yeah see spiders that's that means that you've got a low performing house so i, I you know i guess the opportunities that I'm trying to help educate um, homeowners with, and I talked to Chris Lummer Giddens with LG Squared, and he mentioned that, you know, when you're working on the outside of the house, so if you're replacing, if you have a new roof, there's only, you don't want to tear your roof off to insulate the roof line, especially if you're insulating on the outside, but there's opportunities from the outside if you've done a lot of, if you've made a lot of improvements on the inside, those are the opportunities, like when you're replacing siding, windows, roof line to kind of bring that building envelope out. But again, you're not going to do a deep energy retrofit if, You've already replaced that. You've got that <laughs> sunk cost already. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's what I try to tell people is that there's what are your priorities and what is your budget and then work within that. Because there's all these different ways that you can improve comfort mm -hmm. of your home, uh, either through just let's just start fresh or let's just make small changes. And a lot of people, I mean, an attic's not a comfortable place to be. No. <laughs> so it's... it can be daunting to think about spending time up here and like, where do you start and what do you do? And uh, it's, sometimes it's just easier to hire a professional, but then you need to know how to what find to... a professional oh, yeah. that's going to do what you need. Uh, it is, it's a misconception that, yeah, just add insulation and you're going to fix the problem. It depends on the insulation. If you've got a fibrous insulation like fiberglass or cellulose, yeah. All those do is just move. They just slow air. Exactly. They don't, they don't, they're not going to stop that air movement and heat transfer. It's going to occur through three big ways, like air movement, actual hot surfaces in contact with each other or hot surfaces in line with each other, convection, conduction, and radiation. All right. Yeah. And so you're trying to combat all three of those while, while in an attic in particular, it starts at the top yep. to then help make your living space more comfortable. So basically, if you have an existing house, there's there's opportunities there for many way many different ways of, of doing it. New construction. I mean, you know, for us, it, even even if we're doing a major retrofit, we try to keep the ductwork and the HVAC mm -hmm. within condition space. Not only not only is is that good for the equipment, but also the homeowner doesn't really want to crawl into areas that are not conditioned. It's like who knows what other yeah. kind of wildlife you're going to find in there. So all right, well, I appreciate the the lesson on physics and, and heat transfer. And um, you know, these are now 
to, to find out more about South Face, you guys are, you know, it's at South Face mm -hmm. um, on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But you guys also have courses and, and whatnot for builders and consumers and whatnot to, to learn about these kind of things. So, yes. Kind of, and we have webinars on uh, building science on our website that are free. If oh, you wow. want to learn about specifically uh, heat transfer, moisture transfer, ventilation, uh, those sort of core topics of building science, okay. they're on our website, and you can just watch them for free. Got it. Well, I want to thank Amelia for sharing all this information. They have all the information on their website. And remember, when you're doing these things, you need to look at the whole house together. South Face does a really good job educating builders. So if you don't have a builder that has gone through these programs, make sure they get educated. Or you as a consumer, if you want to know what to tell your builder, you can also take these classes. They don't stop people from watching the free classes or even, even doing some of the, the paid classes. And what we recommend is having a whole plan, doing it all at the same time. Or if you're a DIY uh, person, we'll, we'll talk about how to do it in phases where it makes sense where you're not necessarily doing it once and tearing it out and whatnot. So, all right, thanks again, guys, and see you guys next time.